So I'm here today with my glorious, glorious beard to talk about goosebumps once again. And I know it's not something I've talked about a lot, but it's, it's a huge part of much of our childhoods. And I just, I realized something terrifying about a Goosebumps story called An Old Story Not Long Ago. Now, if you don't remember this one, I don't blame you, it's not one of the more popular stories. It uh, was originally in More Tales to Give You Goosebumps, which was a collection of short stories, and then they later made it into an episode of the TV show. So, some of you are probably familiar with it, and the TV show follows the story pretty closely, so if you've seen one, you know the other pretty well and you understand what I'm talking about. To put it in brief, this story is about these two brothers, who are being taken care of by their great aunt Gladys. While their parents are away. And their aunt Gladys is a very, very old woman, uh, but she seems nice enough and they're all just having fun with it. You know, it's a pretty standard setup as far as goosebump stories go. I'm so happy your mom and dad called me. We're going to have a wonderful time. Do you like to play cards? Uh, and then she starts feeding them these prunes, and at first they're thinking, oh, gross, prunes? I don't want those, but she eventually coaxes them into trying it, and they try them, and they realize, oh, these are pretty good, you know what, I, I like these. Uh, so then they're just going about their days normally, and then both the boys start getting older. Like, their hair starts falling out, they start losing their eyesight and their hearing, they start stooping over, like, they're turning into old men, basically. Good morning, John. How are you? Pardon? How are you feeling? Flowers on the ceiling? And at first, they are freaking out about this, as, you know, <laughs> as you would expect them to do. Uh, and this is, you know, where the horror part of the story begins. It's it's kids' horror, but, you know, it's, it's body horror. And that is scary for people of all ages. But anyways, uh, it starts getting worse, and their Aunt Gladys is telling them, Hey, no, you're fine. It's fine. And then their hair's falling out, and she tries telling them, Oh, don't worry, it's cute. And they're and they're pushing back against this, but they, they really don't have anything to, uh, to do because, you know, they're just kids. This is an adult in power over them. Their parents are gone. There's not much they can uh, do. I'll give them each a hug for you, and we'll spend a quiet afternoon indoors. So then some of their aunt's very old lady friends come over, and they start being, like, way too friendly with the boys. Like, they're being handsy and uh, just being, telling them how they're cute, just being way, way too friendly, and it makes the boys uncomfortable. And uh, in the book, this is where they actually start uh, offering money for the boys, and then they freak out and leave. Uh, in the show, this was handled a little bit better because one of them hides in their aunt's closet, and then he overhears a conversation between the two of them. And basically, this is when we find out that their aunt has been using magical prunes on them to make them turn old, and then she's going to sell them as husbands to some other old ladies. And Lillian wants to marry Tom. We've got it all worked out. We're going to move to Miami and live next door to one another. The boys will never have to be apart. Upon learning this, the boys obviously freak out a little bit. So this is when the boys discover some wrinkle cream, and they put it on, and it makes them young again. And they realize, oh, okay, it's magic. Uh, and in the TV episode, it was baby food that they ate, but not really an important distinction, like, they become young again. And they try confronting her, and their aunt chases them around the house for a bit, and then they splash her with prune juice, and because she's already old, and so much prune juice gets on her, she just crumbles away into dust and dies. Not the prune juice. In the short story, this is also where we learn that apparently she's not actually their aunt. Uh, like, she just kind of came into their life, and then both of their parents assumed that she was related to the other one, so... <laughs> you know, just a, a little bit of absurdity to end the story off with. The TV episode ends a little bit differently. Uh, one of the boys apparently continued eating the baby food until he turned into an actual infant, and then it ends with his brother trying to get him to eat some prunes again so he'll turn back to normal and it just ends on a cliffhanger, like so many Goosebumps stories do, uh, about whether or not he'll turn back. And I guess if he's a baby, that would suck, but, like, he'll probably grow up eventually. You know, like, if anything, that just prolongs his life a bit. Like, if you turn into an old man, 
then you only have a couple of years left and that sucks because most of your youth has been stolen. But if you turn into a baby and you can't get back, that, that sucks, but you, you'll still grow back into your normal self eventually. Here you go, Johnny. A prune cookie. Come on. Mmm. Prune cookie. So, for a couple of reasons, this is kind of dumb. And like, yeah, it's a children's Goosebumps story, so I'm not gonna be too harsh on it, but, you know, there are a couple of things that stand out to me as an adult. Like, for one, did their Aunt Gladys really think that they would just go along with this? Like, they just say, oh, okay, we're magically old now and married to these old sex offenders, I guess we'll just go along with that. Like, did she think their parents would go along with it? Like, oh, okay, our kids are old, well, goodbye. Bye, Tom, see you later. Or did she think that they would just, she would just be able to spirit them off without a trace and their parents wouldn't investigate that? Like, it's kind of weird. But even stranger to me is, why is their Aunt Gladys doing this scheme at all? Like, obviously she wants to make money, <clears throat> but why, why would she, like, take young boys, make them into old gentlemen, and then sell them to old women who presumably have some money to throw around. Like, she has magical de-aging wrinkle cream. Why doesn't she just sell that to them? You know, like, think about it. If you were a very old woman with a lot of money, you were, you know, coming up on retirement, or, excuse me, you already retired and everything, would you rather be, be married to an old man who has the mind of a child, or would you rather be 20 years old again, and then go to the club and get railed by some Chad who also has the mind of a child, but is much better looking. Like, I I don't know, maybe maybe that's just me, but it, it seems like an odd thing to them. Like, it's, it seems like this would be a better business venture, and it would also get Gladys in less trouble because there would be no victims. But as strange as all of that is, it's, it's not what I'm here to talk about. Like, I just needed to set all of that up so I could get to this main point, which is, I, I recently thought about this, and I was like, wait, no, no, that can't be what I'm thinking. So I watched the TV episode, and I read the short story, and I realized this is just a metaphor for child grooming. Like, think about it. That is what, <laughs> that is what this whole story is about. Now, that term has been thrown around a lot lately because, like, the far right really wants to turn it into just gay people existing is instantly pedophilia. Uh, but the real definition of grooming is s when an adult meets someone while they're a minor, sometimes a young ch child, sometimes an older teenager, doesn't really matter, they're underage, and they're just really nice to them and get them to like them. And then once they're of age, of legal age, whether it's 18 or whatever, uh, then they can start a sexual relationship with them. And it's, you know, obviously gross. <laughs> it is... Uh, like, one step above just raping them when they're children, but it's all too common in our society, unfortunately. It is typically the domain of police officers, youth pastors, French film directors, and Onision. So, you know, <laughs> child groomers are in really good company. But, like, think about it, though. That's what this episode is a metaphor for. Like, there's the obvious body horror aspect of, like, oh, okay, you're growing old at a very accelerated rate and your body is decaying. Like, that, that's no fun. Uh, but then there's the whole aspect of these adults that are in a position of power over them are waiting until they're older, maybe not mentally older, because again, it, it's accelerated magically, that's where the metaphor part comes in, and then they can start having sex with them and start a relationship with them, and then it will, I guess, somehow be okay. Like, you know, because if they, if they really just wanted to be pedophiles, I guess they could just have sex with them now, but they don't want to. They want to maintain an air of propriety, I suppose. Like, I, I cannot be the only one thinking this, right? I'm Lillian. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, and you're greening up nicely. <laughs> I'm me, and I have a very nice retirement fund. Enough for two. Like, I'm not losing my mind. This is, this is a real thing. <laughs> Right? Like, that's what this episode is about. Like, Aunt Gladys is whoring them out to older people who are kind of sort of waiting until they're over 18 before they can start having sex with them. Like, that's what makes this episode so horrifying. Like, I remembered it for years and years and years, like, better than a lot of other Goosebumps stories, but it never really struck me as to why until now. <laughs> it's, there's a Goosebumps story where 
the villains are pedophiles. And I guess that's the scariest monster of all. <laughs> So, I don't have a whole lot else to go into here, like, I'm not gonna make this super deep or anything, but just, yeah, we all have to know that this is a thing now. If if you disagree, if you think I'm overthinking this, let me know. Maybe I am just going crazy, but I don't think I am. Anyways, uh, uh, that's all. If, if there are any other Goosebumps episodes that are secretly more horrifying as an adult than as a child, uh, let me know down below. Uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Huge thank to everyone watched this far. Thank to $10 and above patron people names Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodes, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Anselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Evie, Flax, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, L. Lindbergh, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Matthew Baudreau, Microphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Tesla Shark, Vevictus, and Wesley. And all the other names. Um, thank to people for give patron money. If you want name on list or other patron benefit, consider donate. If not, share, like, video, comment, subscribe. Thank. Goodbye. Mimi, grab the baby food. <laughs>